The Hugh Jackman Diaries. Woke up. I could smell something. It was the smell of vomit. It came from a puddle. The puddle of vomit. That I was lying in. Vomit can be a sign of three things. That I'd had a bad night. That I'd had a good night. Or both. I went with all of the above. The time was 4.30 in the afternoon. Mornings seem to be getting later and later these days. Then something in my head and on my tongue told me that the vomit was not my own. That made the likelihood of my having had a good night all the more probable. And when it dawned on me that it was the unmistakable flavour of Nick Nolte's vomit, I knew for certain I'd had one hell of a night. A night to remember. If only I could remember it. It started to come back to me. I was killing time while cameras were being set up for my latest blockbuster celebrity interview. I'd just got a free iPhone and was keen to use it. I'd got it from the jacket pocket of the boom mic operator. I thought I'd prank call Haley Joel Osment and pretend to be Centrelink and warn him that his unemployment benefits were about to be cut off. I've always loved the way he says, this isn't funny, stop calling me, I don't even know what Centrelink is. Of all the people I do that to, he's by far the best. Better even than Demi Moore. There, I said it. So I called Haley Jerkoff's phone. Nick Nolte answered it. He said he'd found the phone lying on the ground during a game of Hahadbita. That stands for Hold Up Haley Upside Down by the Ankles. It's a great game. Nick's record is 46 minutes. I asked Nick if anything else had dropped out of Haley Joel's pockets. Nick laughed. He said there sure as hell weren't any coins, because he's so poor. I pissed myself laughing. I told Nick to put me on speakerphone. I said, hey, Haley Jerk, I got a joke for you. How many Haley Joel Osmonds does it take to change a light bulb? None, because he can't afford light bulbs. Because he's so poor. Nick lost it. He was in hysterics. I said, no offence, Haley Jerk, but I've seen more recent Laurel and Hardy films than I have your own. I said, hey, Hales mate, have you filled in your doll diary this fortnight? He said he didn't know what a doll diary was. I said, yeah, that's because you're so poor. Nick lost it. Hales said, that doesn't even make sense. I said, no sense. Just like your bank account, Hales. All I could hear on the other end was Nick saying, ow, ow, I can't breathe. I told Nick to come on over. Nick said, where are you? I said, I'm right here. He said, where's that? I said, right here. He said, okay, I'll be as quick as I can. Sure enough, in no time I heard a news report of a Hollywood actor causing an incident on a cross-Pacific flight and was being questioned at the airport. For actors like me and Nick Nolte, incident is the only way to fly. By now it was Friday afternoon. I was enjoying Friday after work drinks. I don't know who's after work drinks. I just bar hop around South Melbourne and find a group of suits with a bar tab. I walk up to the bar, order chartreuse. The barman asks how much chartreuse. I ask how much is left on the tab. He tells me. I say, that'll do nicely. So I was enjoying some chartreuse and dancing up a storm and being told to please stop dancing and get off the table we're trying to eat when a security goon came up to me. He said, can I help you mate? I said, yeah, can you go down the shops and get me a couple of Toblerones? I'm starving. The security goon looked at me as though he couldn't believe his ears. Poor guy. Starstruck. I get it all the time. It just dawned on him that he was talking to the real star of Erskineville Kings and Caitlin Leopold. And real steel. I left him to his life-changing experience and ran outside, but not before yanking the plastic charity dog with coins inside off its chain and declaring to the bar that me and my seeing eye dog were being discriminated against. Once outside, I heard a loud horn. It was Nick. He'd found me. He'd got the bus from the airport. But not the airport bus. He'd managed to hijack one of them party buses. There was a hen's night inside. I jumped on the bus. And by that, I mean I climbed onto the bus roof and jumped up and down. Still with me plastic dog. Nick started driving. He's American, but driving on the wrong side of the road wasn't a problem for him. It was a problem for the oncoming cars in our lane. We were on the west gate, flying. On the speed limit, though. Well, if you round down to the nearest hundred, we were on the speed limit. The hens night started screaming, most likely because there was poor-ass music blasting from the party bus speakers. It was party music. Poor girls, how are you supposed to have a good time with party music? What they were clearly in need of was some real party music. Scandinavian metal. I climbed down the side of the bus. Through the window, I passed Nick a mixtape I'd made of the Children of Bottom song, Hellhounds on My Trail. It was the one song repeated again and again, the whole tape. It's one of those tapes where side two is just as good, if not better, than side one. So, there I was, clutching a plastic charity dog on the side of a hen's night party bus, driven by Nick Nolte, flying across the Westgate Bridge, with Children of Bottom's Hellhounds on My Trail blasting out the sound system. How could a Friday night get any better? There was one way. I shouted directions to Nick. He followed them. The hens night were meant to be going to some nightclub, but I'd give them something better. Way better. We'd go to one of my favourite places to party. The Hoppers Crossing Macca's car park. And that's where we went. Not before stopping, so I could get some Toblerones from a servo. As Nick distracted the servo attendant, 
We spent the rest of the night eating the Toblerones in the party bus at the Hoppers Crossing Macca's car park, doing burnouts, donuts, tagging public toilets. The hens night was screaming like crazy. How could they not? After all, they were having a once in a lifetime experience with Nick Nolte and me, the one and only, all singing, all dancing, all car park burnout superstar of Hoppers Crossing and the world, Hugh Jackman. The Hugh Jackman Diaries.